Oh, here we go again. <laughs> oh, heavy wet snow and uh, it's above freezing so it should go pretty quick. Well 24 hours, slight rise in temperatures and some rain. At least it's going. But everything's like a bog. <laughs> it's absolutely sloppy. Hey guys. <laughs> Workshop shirt, although I got rid of it uh, a couple of days, yeah, a couple of days ago. And uh, I know I always bore you stupid about talking about the weather, but it's a British thing, you see. But anyway, we had, a few days ago, we had a load of wet, heavy snow. Then it warmed up and that started to clear. That's what the uh, first clips were showing, 24 hours apart. Uh, I've been working on the uh, collet chuck and uh, <laughs> it's been done in bits and pieces over several days so continuity may be absolutely awful. I apologise in advance if it seems a bit disjointed but uh, the first step was to make three uh, thread buttons to go in the uh, back blade because I hadn't got any thread available. It uh, bolts from the front and not from the back, this chuck. Other people will know that if they have one. So anyway, a uh, bit of fiddle getting the thread right. That was quite awkward actually at the latter stage, getting it fitting the spindle properly. Um, so some of the fiddle with that I didn't even show because it was just messing around. And I've got it set up now, I've checked it. It seems to be running pretty good. I still got some checks to make. I think the combination of import collet chuck, import 5C collet <laughs> may not necessarily give perfect truth with every collet size. I don't know yet. I haven't uh, found out. Anyway, it's another job out of the way. And although we're a bit milder for a while and very wet, hope you folks down south are coping and not getting flooded out. It looks pretty awful. Uh, what are we now? Hang on. It's actually 20, February 23rd today, just so you know, 2018. And the beginning of March was forecast just the other day. Oh my, it's going to be cold, freezing. Well, partly freezing. Absolutely wonderful. So I don't know when I'll get back out here. And I say that almost every time, but I don't. And I've had a load of other things crop up which have taken me out of the shop. And that's why it's been so bitty. Anyway, enough waffle. <laughs> Here's the video, which I hope when I've edited it will uh, make some sort of sense. <laughs> All right. Oh, by the way, thanks. I often forget to say this. Thanks to all my subscribers. I've no idea why I have so many. And I'm grateful for every one of you. Thanks very much for subbing. Um, as others often say, if you like the video, hit the like. If you don't like it, hit the dislike. <laughs> I always get a few of those, probably because of what I'm doing now, talking too much. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. See you soon, I hope. Bye. Before I start playing with other projects, uh, for instance, the tailstock offset thing, which I'd like to get on with, but I've got the uh, collet chuck. It's already getting moisture on it because of temperature change. It's warming up a bit. Tomorrow's supposed to be 70 or so. And if it's humid, we'll have to watch have to watch all the metal. I mean this is nice and bright at the moment. <laughs> Anyway, here we are. We've got the collet chuck. Um, I actually, I actually had to get a rather ridiculous expense. Um, they supply three forty-five mil M eights. They're just not quite long enough. 
so I've got some 50s here and buying them one at a time is ridiculous price anyway I've got those so I've got the chuck and I've got a back plate now fortunately let me just turn this over a minute fortunately the uh, fixing three hole pattern and uh, the back plate has a four hole pattern and a three and the three matches that which is absolute luck as far as I'm concerned um, but because the uh, back plate is attached from the front in other words we're coming through like this into the back plate uh, the back plate isn't threaded uh, it's got um, counterboard holes so what I'm going to do I've got to work out a sequence here for what I'm going to do uh, the three holes that I'm going to use I'll need to turn three little slugs with M8 thread at a fairly tight fit with and Loctite and then the uh, bolt coming through can take up on those I think that'll work alright but <clears throat> the first thing is this is a one and a half what is it one and a half by eight which I think is, is it standard uh, craftsman I think anyway I've got to make this this is my dummy spindle thread uh, square thread 6 TPI so <clears throat> the first job uh, we'll have to set this up in the four jaw very carefully bore that out and then thread it and then this register here is about three and a half mil too wide compared to across across here so once we've got it threaded get it on the spindle uh, relieve that register to slightly undersize which will give me scope for final adjustment when I set this up and uh, the other thing which is a little bit annoying but I think I can deal with it and I'll show you and I'll have to go handheld here you may just see down in there that's the guide pin for the uh, keyway on, on a on a C5 where is it there uh, the depth of that measures at uh, 700 no sorry <laughs> it's 70 thou and uh, when I tried the fit in here it was a bit tight to get it back to engage in the thread so I think I've got to just take a perhaps four or five thou off that little pin uh, which comes out of the side all right let's see where we go just making these uh, thread buttons I've got a really gnarly bit of mystery <laughs> 5 8 stuff I've just had to turn that down to just above 566 um, and that'll just fit the uh, pockets in the back plate I'm going to run a quarter down here first and then put down a letter I which is just a few thou larger than the uh, tapping size I'll finish that off <coughs> I've only got to make um, uh, just clear some chips I've just got to make three four hundred so I'm going to get uh, get the tapping drill down after this and then thread it
Right, so we've got down inch and a half and that should give us uh, enough length for what we want plus the uh, parting off. Just tapping as far as I can go at the moment. Using a spindle handle, that's the limit on there for the chuck spins. Yep, we'll finish that by hand. Just go in as far as I can. That's about it. And then we'll run the tap again after we've uh, parted off the first piece. Right, I've used a file to chamfer there just before we finish. I'm actually finishing the cup. Again, I'm using the spindle handle because, uh, I say, this material is a bit, a little bit odd. So I just finish it by hand. It was tending to chatter a little bit. I should have put the back gear in really, but uh, too lazy. I've put a bit of sponge underneath to try and avoid focusing on the chips. <laughs> uh, just face this and then put a little chamfer on it, an internal chamfer. Well, we got the buttons made. I just, I couldn't, I was going to use some uh, full locking Loctite, but it's what I had has gone off. It must have suffered from heat or something. Uh, I should have to use the press, I think. Oh, the arbor press, hang on. Yeah, just that first one. A little bit tight. The others have gone in pretty good. So I think what we'll do is um, tension these from the back side so they're fully home. Right, as I said, one of these took a bit of effort to get in, the other two were fine. Just a very light, good fit, but um, medium thread lock is all I've got, and I'm hoping it'll do. So I've actually put them under tension from underneath, and we'll leave that to cure. And hopefully those will do the job. So the next thing is to set this up in the four jaw. No, no, yes, set it up in four jaw, bore that out, make a new thread. <laughs> it's another day, and it's um, a freaky day. It's about mid 70s. Ridiculous. And Murphy's Law dictates I've got loads of other stuff I've got to be doing, so. I shall just have to pick away at this. Anyway, we've got um, oh the other thing. Um, I can't find my one to two mic. <laughs> it's ridiculous. How can a micrometer disappear? And I'm completely puzzled by it. So I'm going to have to use my two to three with a, an inch gauge block for final checks. Anyway, what we're going to do, I've got this set up. It's running true in all directions, so we've got to bore out the old thread, which is the old inch and a half, eight I think it was, what's that, Craftsman, uh, 
bore that out and take it up to 1.583 which is the uh, crest dimension for the new 6 TPI square thread and I've, you won't, I very much doubt if you'll see this dial very well, not by the time I do the video. Uh, I'm only using that against the uh, tool holder, which is a cross slide reference. So, and I've got a cloth here, it's well clear of the chuck, and you know what it's like with the mess that you get from uh, cast iron. I actually hate working on it, but uh, I've got no choice here. Right, this gets tedious. <laughs> I'll bring you back a bit later. Well, I gave up on those carbide tip boring bars I was trying. Uh, I managed to cut the thread off, but uh, I was getting too much chatter, so we switched to this boring bar, which is um, about the strongest one I've got. I've got an HSS tool in there. So I've got a few more cuts to take and I'm taking it pretty slow. Let's see how we get on. Let's get a little bit of extra light on there. Whether you'll see the dial indicator, I'm not sure. That's not a bad cut. I just check with the vernier. You now I better use the uh, telescope gauge, although this old one seems to have a very weak spring. That's all right, I'll check that and uh, carry on and get finished before we do some threading. Well, I got the bore to size. I should have done this before actually, but I just want to take the lightest skim on here before I take another cut inside. You'll see why I do that in a minute. I only want the merest amount. A nice magnetic piece of tool steel. All right, that's that's pretty nice. Let's set up the boring bar again. Now we've got to cut uh, a relief in here to about uh, what's it got? 283, and that's to fit over the back of the spindle nose. So we'll cut that out before we do the threading. Alright, I'll continue with that. I'm going to take fairly small bites. Uh, I meant to mention on the uh, previous one, I was boring right through. I tend to come back fairly slow on the basis that the return gives a very slight effective spring cut. So I tend to do that as a matter of course. Right, getting set up for threading. Uh, I've taken a quick scratch through there, we're good, 6 TPI, and 
I've taken my uh, cloth away because I needed the carriage stop for this uh, section here. So I'm going to carry on a bit and uh, get some thread. I'm going to use the spindle handle actually for that few turns. It's actually not a great effort and it's easier to feel what's going on. I'm not going to video most of this because it uh, takes a bit of concentration. Get there gradually. Only taking a max cut of five thou. Well, I'm about two thirds of the way. It's rather slow going. This uh, tool grind may be not quite perfect, but I don't want to re grind because it's, uh, I don't want to disturb the width of cut. Anyway, one small point. This uh, can't even get the whole thing in. <laughs> I mentioned about uh, mislaying. I or I, you know, I think I've lost my one to two, Mike. Can't find it. So I got this Charles one. It was less than forty bucks. It's got carbide tips. Very simple digital display. The analog goes up to tenths. And I've checked it out and it seems extremely good value. <laughs> so, where the original mic is, I don't know. Maybe it'll turn up now. Anyway, I'm going to carry on and uh, just keep taking small cuts. This is quite good cast iron, but it's actually pretty tough. So anyway, <coughs> carry on, try and get to the end. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> it, what is it, two days later. This job is so bitty, I haven't really managed to get down to it, turn doing it all in one hit. And the weather's cooler again. Uh, anyway, that's enough about the weather. <laughs> yeah, I kept this in the four jaw and turned it round to do a test fit. And uh, initially it was a bit too tight. And I more or less expected that because the uh, tooling was, I think, about two to three thou too narrow. So when I got my depth, I had to actually take some cuts by advancing the compound, which is set up at zero degrees, so I could get a cut on the back side of each of the threads. Still a slight burr on there, but I think it'll wear off. So what I've got to do now is to put this in the, on the spindle and uh, deal with the other side. Working close to the spindle here is always awkward because it's hard to get uh, the carriage and everything far, far enough up. Partly because I've got my uh, carriage depth stop in the way, but anyway, I'm just going to take a tiny skim on the outside, just a touch, tiny bit on that face, tiny bit on the uh, register area, and then reduce the diameter of that. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> Uh, 
I've actually changed tooling and taken another little pass there. Cleaned up a bit better, but anyway, we've got to get to 64 thou off that that diameter there. One thing I haven't bothered with yet, and I don't know whether I will, is uh, you can see the end of the thread here. Well, normally that is uh, bored out just to tidy it up. I may or may not bother, but uh, uh, these cast iron chips. I haven't taken that right down to, there's a relief here you might notice, I don't know. I'll just check that for size and uh, see what we've got. I'm actually going to make this very slightly smaller than the female because I want scope for a little bit of adjustment. Right, I finished up about four thou smaller. And that allows me just a tiny bit of float for when I set it up, hopefully. So, just put a slight chamfer on there and I think I'm done with it. Let's try and wrap this up. Um, I've got these bolts done up. I haven't finally tightened them. Uh, 3 8 collet and this is some 3 8 ground material which I've got a whole lot of these pieces and I'm assuming this one's pretty straight and it seems as though if you can see the dial gauge indicator I've turned it so you can see it, hopefully. And at the moment there's about half to three quarters of a thou, I suppose. Might be able to improve on that, but there again. Uh, the chuck is in import, the 5C collet's in import. I dare say if I moved things around it might be not quite as good. But anyway, basically that's the job done, apart from just a few little tidy up jobs. Um, I'm not sure whether I can set this up on my anti-reversing setup, which some may have seen some time ago. I'll have to see about that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that's about it. Very fragmented but uh, success in the end.